when was this made? How did Nevada come to be? Where is the energy stored? Where is the energy stored? Is Monitor a real place? Why are, are some of them shaded and some of them are not shaded? Why is the map in different colors? Is this supposed to be satire? When I started incorporating more primary sources in my classroom, what I noticed is that it was no longer me doing all the thinking, but it was the students, and the students became more curious about different perspectives. When I would bring in one or two voices through a primary source, and we would start to look at that, they would say, well, where's this person? Or where's this side of the argument? Why do we not see something from there? And that for me was highly motivating because I had to look for those multiple perspectives. Primary sources, especially images, audio, diaries, letters, all of those items help to flesh out, breathe air into history, unlike a simple textbook can do. We did minstrel shows and we used some sheet music from the Library of Congress and just some of the imagery on that sheet music for the minstrel shows, the titles, etc., generate questions. <laughs> it's like, whoa, what, what is this, you know? So primary source materials do things that sometimes us teachers just can't, can't do. The main objective, analyze cultural beliefs and attitudes that justified U.S. imperialism. Okay, so if you guys can click on that link, this image is going to be the cue focus. And let's go for it. Is that Uncle Sam? There's a caricature face of the black characters on purpose. In the beginning, you're not looking at the primary source or the cue focus in a way that you have your academic hat on. You're looking at it and just who you are and why you're curious about figuring something out. And ultimately, that's a great place to have your students be when they're learning and not feeling like they have to be right or there's a wrong way to interpret something. So that's one thing I really love about the QFT is that it lowers the student's effective filter when they're confronted with a primary source. It serves as a natural protocol for students to be more independent. So the fact that the students can start using the QFT early on to find a way to connect to sources that are challenging, could be an image, but it could be a document, just having a, a a thinking process that would allow the student with confidence to encounter a source like that and say, yeah, I have a process through which I can find my way through. I think it's the earlier you can introduce primary sources to our budding scientists, the better, right? Like, I just, I feel like that acknowledgement that these primary sources should be the things that we're looking at to support our learning. It's important. Is this a typical power plant? Immediate engagement is just exciting. And so there's a, I don't know, there's a little bit of like electricity or a excitement when students see that you're going to do a QFT lesson. The most magical piece of QFT are the rules. They acknowledge the importance of voice and most importantly, a perspective of the students. You know, if you have a student that's coming into this knowing very little, what I love about the QFT is that you don't realize that a student doesn't know a lot because the other kid who supposedly knows a lot is also asking questions. So that's seamless and that's the way it should be.